full round mock draft of the year is coming out now. It's coming out way earlier than last year, which is what I want and I'm very thankful for. I'm going to have other singular team mock drafts coming out. Don't worry. Uh, the reason I'm recording it, uh, this one, I, I was going to record the Bengals, but I'm honestly not feeling the best. I don't want to show myself on camera, really. But we got a full first round mock draft coming for you where I don't have to show on camera. I can just talk about draft prospects, which honestly makes me feel a lot better anyways. So here we go. The Jags at number one. It was Aiden Hutchinson for a while. It was Kayvon Thibodeau for a while. Before the season, it was Spencer Rattler and Sam Howell. What the hell have we done now? I think this is Evan Neal. And he's my number one tackle. Obviously, I have him going number one. But it's also because I think they need to protect Trevor Lawrence. And he's the future. And Doug Peterson's an offensive-minded head coach. And that defense is, uh, it isn't the worst defense, especially for edge rusher. Like, if you're going to take a defensive player this high, it should be edge rusher. I do think getting Josh Allen a component piece is fine, but if you take a look <clears throat> at this edge rusher class, you know, uh, there's a lot of top guys, but you scroll down, you get guys like Cameron Thomas you can take at the top of the second round. Maybe De uh, George Karloftis falls at the second round. Uh, Boy Mayfeet out of Minnesota isn't a terrible player. So there's all these guys at the top of the second round, and they do have the number one pick in the top of the second round that... They can work with, and they can take an edge rusher there. But I think Evan Neal's the guy right here. There's kind of a drop-off in the offensive tackle class. You need offensive line, and you need to give Trevor Lawrence time because he is your franchise. A team that could take a quarterback early uh, in the Detroit Lions. However, I don't think they will. I think they'll go Aiden Hutchinson out of Michigan. Was really good. Had an amazing season. Uh, pretty much carried Michigan to the playoffs. Didn't play the best in the... Uh, game, but I still think Aiden Hutchinson has all the uh, tools there to become a top edge rusher in the league, and the Detroit Lions needs a serious boost on defense. They need a huge serious boost out of everything, to be honest with you. It's Detroit, but fan favorite. He's from Michigan. He played at Michigan, too. He'll play in Detroit. The fans will love it. It gets asses in seat. That's what they need. Detroit getting a huge boost here. I think Aiden Hutchinson will ball out and easily be one of the best players on that Lions defense all Ready. Now we set up here with the Texans, and I am stuck between Ike Mokwanu and Kayvon Thibodeau. Kyle Hamilton's there too, but I think Ike Mokwanu or Kayvon Thibodeau right here is probably the smarter pick. And to be honest with you, I'm giving him Kayvon Thibodeau. Back to back edge rushers here. Larry Tunsil at tackle is fine. Uh, you could easily move Ike Mokwanu, but they don't really know who the quarterback is. Uh, do you have maybe have something there with Davis Mills or not? But Kayvon Thibodeau, on the other hand, gives your defense, which is lacking serious uh, defensive line presence since losing J.J. Watt. Kayvon Thibodeau gets that defense back a present. There's, like, workout issues and, like, effort issues concerns. I don't buy it. I feel like once he gets to the NFL, I think everything will be sorted straight. We've seen top draft picks uh, like Jamarcus Russell. He just didn't care at all. I think Kayvon Thibodeau cares a lot about football. I've seen some of his workout videos. Uh, the combine's coming up, so Kayvon Thibodeau at uh, 3 to the Houston Texans gives their defense a boost as well, and that gives Eve McQuanu right there. It's going to be Elijah Vera Tucker, it's going to be Makai Becton, and then Eke McQuanu if they take him. That is a pretty damn good offensive line, pretty damn good young offensive line. Makai Becton, who I loved, has been a stud, it's a problem for him is staying healthy. Elijah Vera Tucker is a very good run uh, pass blocker for guard. And Iko Kwanu can go out there right tackle. You pretty much your entire offensive line is set from that point forward. You're missing like a guard and a center pretty much, but you don't need those to like that's not as important as a left tackle or right tackle is for protecting Zach Wilson. And when Zach Wilson had time, he was making plays, he made plays like I think Iko Kwanu right there is versatile on the lines, can kind of play anywhere, kind of an Elton Jenkins type right here, but I think he'll be drafted where Elton Jenkins probably should have been drafted. I'm very thankful he fell to the Packers anyways. But Ike McQuanu there to the New York Jets uh, is how we like it. Giants are up now. And I think, do they take Kyle Hamilton? Do they take Charles Cross? Do they give their offense a boost? What do they do here? I'm giving them Kyle Hamilton. It's not normal for a safety to go this high in the draft at all. But when Kyle Hamilton has 
the smarts that he does, the athleticism that he does, and the playmaking ability that he does all from the safety, he's kind of a guy that can change your defense. Look how important Tyron Matthew is for the Chiefs' defense, and Cal Hamilton can be like that. The Giants are kind of lacking sort of any secondary presence besides James Bradbury and Jabril Peppers anyways. So I think giving them another significant boost, and when the coverage is better, it gives the defense better. The Giants need a lot. That's why they have two first-round picks. They'll pick their guys uh, next. But moving on to the Carolina Panthers, I am giving them Charles Cross because that offensive line played terrible. I don't care who your quarterback is, whether it's Washed Cam Newton, P.J. Walker somehow, and Sam Darnold, then it's okay. But I, I Charles Cross there, yeah, pretty easy pick right there for the Carolina Panthers. I think that's kind of... It's any one of the tackles, like if the Jets to Cal Hamilton and then the Giants go with like an edge rusher or a corner, then they take Eve McQuanu. Either way, it's a tackle right there for the Panthers. Pretty much almost always for me when I'm doing mock drafts. And then I'm taking Jermaine Johnson right here for the New York football Giants. They need edge rusher. That defense didn't play the best. The offense has some playmaking abilities pretty much all on quarterback. I could have given them a quarterback right there, like maybe a Malik Wills or Matt Corral. But from the talks of it, they're talking like they're themselves into Daniel Jones. They got an offense minded head coach. I can give him another year. There's plenty of playmakers on that offense. Kenny Galladay. Saquon Barkley. Starling, old Sterling Shepard. Darius Slayton. Who's my new job? Katarius Tony. I mean, there's a lot of playmakers on that offense. If you can figure out how to work and make it work with Daniel Jones, who, by the way, has running ability, which is like one of the most shocking things ever, then you, yes, you can make it work there. With Daniel Jones, I think that offense ability, this defense needs to really step up. I think two young picks right there for that defense really can change this entire defense around. Jermaine Johnson's a pretty good edge rusher. He's been rising up the boards. Kyle Hamilton has been at the top of the draft, especially for safety. These two players right here, especially Kyle Hamilton, can change that defense up. So I like those picks. And then the Falcons, <coughs> excuse me, Falcons right here are a tough pick. Because do I want to give them a corner or do they need an edge rusher and Trayvon Walker? I'm giving him Sauce Gardner because A.J. Terrell Jr., who another prospect that I really liked, and then Sauce Gardner, who was just had one of the best corner college careers ever, played amazing, put him there in Cincinnati. Uh, I was thinking of Trevon Walker, uh, Trevon Walker at the edge rusher out of Georgia, just to keep it local kind of, but I like Sauce Gardner there. It's a young secondary, two really young, two good corners right there. I think... Sauce Gardner is Ahmad Gardner. Sauce Gardner is going to be good. So yeah, I like Ahmad Gardner there. And then the Broncos are up as of recording this at two on two twenty three two twenty two at ten fifty p.m. They don't have a quarterback, okay? And they do Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Locke. But I'm going to give them Matt Corral here. And everybody's like Malik Willis, Malik Willis. I'm a Matt Corral guy. I think they're similar play styles. Uh, Matt Corral played more RPO style, and Malik Willis played. And a more pass-heavy offense. But I, I'm more of a Matt Corral guy. I like the potential there. I think his ceiling is higher than Malik Willis. And then it's simple. Kenny Pickett's floor is higher. Uh, Malik Willis' ceiling's higher. And then I like Matt Corral. But Matt Corral's been my number one quarterback for a while. I don't think I'm going to change up anytime soon unless like a serious combine comes out and changes a lot of things. But Matt Corral at Ole Miss. Broncos need a quarterback. It's simple as that. The offense is there. It's just a quarterback away. This entire team, I feel, is just a quarterback away. This team is very talented, but the quarterback position holding him back. Matt Corral out of Ole Miss right there. Giant, uh, The Jets are back up with their earlier pick. They took Eve McQuanu. Now what do you do? I think they boost the defense a little bit. I'm going to give them Trayvon Walker out of Georgia, the edge rusher. Quinn Williams is really good. John Flexen Myers on the inside is pretty good. Their big signing last year, Carl Lawson, tore his ACL, who I think is a good player. Give him Trayvon Walker on the other side of him, help him develop. That's a pretty good defensive line, just like that. Derek Stingley Jr. has fallen a little bit because everybody's projecting him to be the best corner in the class. Me personally, I like Sus Gardner better just because he did what he did for longer. But Derek Stingley Jr. is the best corner freshman that we ever saw, and now you're banking on him to hit that potential. So, but him and Sauce Gardner, you're just hoping Sauce Gardner can continue that extremely high play level in the NFL, and Derek Stingley Jr., you're just hoping he gets back to what his freshman days were when that LSU team was insane, and Derek Stingley Jr. was a part of that. But for Washington football team, I don't think they go with quarterback here. I don't think there's like an electrifying quarterback on the board, and it's obviously like they're making a big swing at quarterback. <coughs> Between Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett, it's tough right there to pick. 
but I think I am going to give Malik Willis. Malik Willis right there out of Liberty. Second quarterback off the board to Washington football team. He's got serious playmaking ability, and that offense does have weapons, especially Scary Terry and Curtis Samuel, who people kind of forgot about because he was hurt all year. They do need offensive line boost because uh, Brand Sheriff's tenure seems to have run out. The Commanders, uh, they need a quarterback. I think Malik Willis can be that guy to lead them into promised land. I don't think this is the best quarterback class in the world, but quarterbacks just seem to go early. If Malik Willis is Washington's guy. They're not going to wait around. They're taking Malik Willis and hoping that he is the game changer this offense needs and can take him to the future. Maybe like a Jalen Hurts type, right? Maybe not the most athletic, maybe not the most gifted with the arm talent, but he can make plays and win you games and get you to the playoffs, which is ultimately what every team is striving for. This is why they had Derek Stanley Jr.'s drop. Uh, it's not too far of a drop. It's like six spots for going off this ranked board here. Uh, but Derek Stanley Jr., uh, the Vikings see, always seem to be cornerback, uh, and Derek Stanley Jr. can has serious potential to be like an elite shutdown corner. So I think Derek Stanley Jr. right there fits a need for the Minnesota Vikings. Browns are up. Not that many needs because it's a talented team. However, I don't think quarterback's one of a need. Let's give Baker a year. If he plays like shit again, then yeah, okay, yeah give it to him. But I think it's a receiver because Jarvis Landry might be gone. OBJ is already gone. After that, it's just Anthony Schwartz, who is like a speed demon. You need someone who's got a crisp route runner out there. I don't think that's Jameson Williams for me. I think that's Garrett Wilson. Be better route runner. James Williams kind of that speedy over-the-top guy. Traylon Burks uh, isn't the best route runner. I value route running a lot. Like, James Williams is my number one receiver in this class. Don't get me wrong. But I value route running a lot for the wide receiver. Traylon Burks isn't the best route running. But he is a really good catcher of the football. It's kind of a Jarvis Landry type there. Maybe... He fits there, but I gave him Garrett Wilson there for a reason. Um, the Ravens up now, they need defense and or corner because they were so thin at corner last year. Like the Bucks and Ravens were very, very thin at corner. Uh, but I'm giving them an edge rusher here. When your defense line plays better, it's statistically proven that the secondary plays better, less time to throw, makes your corners seem better because they're having better win rates. And uh, David Ajabo is a very good player out of Michigan. Like I think it's a defensive line. Two top 15 picks. One in the top two. Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo out of Michigan. But when Aiden Hutchinson was getting double teamed, David Ajabo really shined through. I think he's got all the talent and traits as well there to be an elite edge rusher. And the Baltimore Ravens need an edge rusher. They need an edge rusher really badly. So David Ajabo to Michigan. Now we get to start the Eagles part of the mock draft where it's just Eagles, 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 right? They do need another weapon. So I'm giving them James Williams. Uh, Their guard, Bre uh... Brandon Brooks just retired, so I am giving them Tyler Linderbaum at Iowa. And they still need weapons. Like, Jalen Rager sucks. Okay, he was not good. Henry Ruggs had more yards than him. Uh, <coughs> Devontae Smith can be too good. J.J. Isaiah Wise ain't good. They need a weapon. They need It's a weapons league. You need more weapons out there for Jalen Hurts if you want to succeed. James William, Brandon Brooks retire. I like Tyler Linderbaum. You can kick him out to guard or kick Jason Kelsey out to guard. Either way, Tyler Linderbaum is a great offensive line player. Might be the best offensive lineman in the entire class. If we're not basing off like positional value. So I like Tyler Linderbaum there. Give me him to 16. Uh, the Chargers, now they need to your D-line because that run defense sucked. I'm going to give them Jordan Davis because it's a big, flashy pick, and LA needs that. And they also do need improvement on that run defense. That run defense slowed them down tremendously last year. Saints, this is the Traylon Burks pick. I do think they need receiver. They need more weapons out there for Jameis Winston. I don't think it's a quarterback, even though there's a specific quarterback still up on the board, which we'll get to him in a minute. But they ain't no receiver. Michael Thomas hasn't played football in a year, and it really showed they struggled the offense, and who knows what Alvin Kamara's legal situation is going to be. I think he'll be fine going into next season, by the way. But <coughs> the Saints need a re receiver pretty badly. Like Traylon Burks is best receiver on the board, although I'm personally a Chris Olave guy. But, oh, by the way, uh, Dan Jeremiah's thing, he had Drake London go <laughs> seven to the Giants, which I thought was insane, but hey, Daniel Jeremiah knows better than any of us, right? But hey, like Traylon Burks there to the Saints. Fits a need. They need more weapons out there uh, besides little Jordan Humphrey. So, 
That's the pick there. Andrew Booth Jr., for me, going to the Eagles. They need more secondary help. That secondary and receiver core seems to always be a problem. I gave him offensive line boost. I gave him a receiver boost. I gave him a corner boost. He doesn't have to be the number one corner, which I always think is best for young corners when they don't have to be the number one cornerback back there. They got Darius Slay. Andrew Booth Jr. can be there covering that number two receiver. Uh, he's got man coverage, zone coverage ability, so give me Andrew Booth Jr. there. Fills a need and gives a nice boost to that Philadelphia Eagles secondary, which was pretty weak. And, yeah... I'm giving him Kenny Pickett. Big Ben's retired from Pittsburgh. Kenny Pickett is probably the most pro-ready quarterback there is, like a Mac Jones type. This isn't a rebuilding Steelers team. Mike Tomlin's a good head coach. His defense is good. Najee Harris out there. Don't know what Juju yet, but Deontay Johnson can be good at some time. James Washington, I like, is underrated. The offense line's terrible, <laughs> so there's that. But Kenny Pickett right there to Pittsburgh. Fits the quarterback need. They have their guy. You can start Mason. You can rock with Mason Rudolph if you want at the beginning of the year. Mid-season plug-in Kenny Pickett there. But this is the best possible spot, I think, for any quarterback to land. Uh, besides, like, a winning team like the Chiefs. But for an openly QB needy team, Kenny Pickett to the Pittsburgh Steelers, I don't think much changes for them. I think they still go 9-8 and eight every year. But, no, Kenny Pickett can develop that guy. He can get into that offense. He can be a stud. Trevor Penning there is a dog. They do need offensive line, but if Kenny Pickett's right there. The guy that can just do what you kind of did with Favre and Rodgers, right? They went from, they, so they can go from Big Ben to Kenny Pickett, and Kenny Pickett can be that guy for Pittsburgh. I like the pick there. <clears throat> J.C. Jackson has come out a lot saying they don't want him. They don't want me. They don't want me. So with that being said, Trent McDuffie to the Pit, uh, New England Patriots there makes sense because if you lose, J.C. Jackson corner easily becomes the top need of the class. I know they need weapons. Plenty of receivers in the draft can work. It hasn't really worked for New England in the past, but plenty in the draft can work. You still have Mac Jones back there. You need to keep this defense winning. Obviously, New England has shown defense first is how they're going to win their games. So give me Trent McDuffie out of there. It fills a need if J.C. Jackson leaves, and we haven't done for agents yet on February 23rd, 2022. So if some of these picks are like, needs don't matter, please don't base off this, because Combine hasn't happened yet. Uh, free agency hasn't happened yet. And yeah, so that's my excuse for why half these picks are going to be wrong. I talked about the Raiders. I gave some people to pick. I'm giving them Zion Johnson. They still need offensive line. They need a guard pretty badly. So I'm giving them <coughs> Zion Johnson. I like Trevor Penning. The fall for him continues all right so here we go uh with the arizona cardinals and this pick is kind of easy for me i'm not gonna lie they need corner the best corner on the board well i like a lot where is he hang on give me a second i gotta find him i like a lot i think corner is a big need give me roger mccree there to the Arizona Cardinals. They, it fills a need. Byron Murphy Jr. is pretty good. Roger McCreary was a shutdown man corner. They can get that. Byron Murphy's his zone, zone corner. Anyways, give me Roger McCreary there. <clears throat> out of Auburn. He's so good. I don't even care he's out of Auburn. He is a, such a good player. They need corner. They need another number two corner to help shut down all those weapons out there in L.A. <laughs> and in Seattle. And in San Francisco. Roger McCreary fills a need right there. So I like that pick a lot. For the Arizona Cardinals. Dallas Cowboys up now. And this is a tough pick for me too. Do I give him the Kobe Dean? They need that, that big linebacker presence. They got Michael Parsons. They don't really choose. Do I give him Trevor Penning? Do I give him a safety? This board is kind of shifted out weird. And for me, I'm giving him the Kobe Dean. It's kind of a weird pick. Not a lot of people are mocking the Kobe Dean to there, but they use Michael Parsons more of an edge rusher. Although he can be that middle linebacker. You need a true center of the field. Linebacker like Nick Bolton was for the Chiefs a lot last year. I Nicobe Dean was that for this Georgia defense who won them the Super Bowl or not Super Bowl, college football playoff national championship. Nicobe Dean right there, you can just use Mike Parsons full time edge That's a pretty good defense, especially with Demarcus Lawrence on the other side. Yeah, it is a pretty good defense. Bills need a guard, and they need to get that running game going. It's how they lose games a lot. The run game just isn't there for them, and Josh Allen kind of has to carry it all for them. He's got the Aaron Rodgers effect going. Kenyon Green, interior D offensive lineman. They get the guard they need to boost that run defense. Out of Texas A&M. There's the pick. Linebacker, <coughs> Devin Lloyd. Uh, Titans defense still 
needing them to give him boost. I'm not giving him Desmond Ritter there. Uh, it's not the right spot. They are still keeping him. So give me Devin Lloyd right there out of Utah. As much as I don't want to do this, <clears throat> Drake London to Tampa Buccaneers. They need a quarterback. They need a quarterback. I know. Chris Godwin is not under contract. AB is out. It's Mike Evans, Tyler John. Tyler John's a great player, by the way. I think he's got the potential to be a solid number two receiver for Tampa Bay for years to come. But getting them another corner, getting them another wide receiver right there is insane. Uh, they need it. They need another need, especially with who, we don't know who their quarterback is. Bruce Arians talked himself into Blaine Gabbert being good, which is okay, fine. What You want to do that, Bruce? Do it. Go ahead and do it. But Drake London right there to Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They fits a knee, especially with the AB out, especially with Chris Gallman under not under contract at the moment. So we don't know what's going to happen with them. But Drake London, wide receiver out of USC, going to. And I went in depth on the receivers in my Packers mock draft video, which you guys should definitely go watch. But I went in depth. So give me Drake London right there out of USC. And I'm I'm not. Give me Trevor Penning out of Northern Iowa. Packers needed offensive line pretty much all year. They got bullied around. By San Francisco as they do in the playoffs. I don't think it's the biggest need for Green Bay. I think a receiver or an edge rusher right there would be fine. But if you got a player as good as Trevor Penning on the board, you take him. And honestly, a lot of these teams up here could have I cry could have given them to the Raiders, could have given them to the Cardinals, uh, Cowboys. All these players, I love Trevor Penning. It just happened to he fall to my favorite team, the Green Bay Packers. I would be absolutely stoked. D Bach, you can kick. Jenkins to guard, and he played that multiple times after he's done recovering from his ACL. Josh Myers at center was pretty damn good. Trevor Penning, that's a good young offensive line for Jordan Love and or Aaron Rodgers. Uh, hopefully Aaron Rodgers. Even though I just made a video uh, titled, It's Time to Move On from Aaron Rodgers. So I'm thinking it's more likely going to be Jordan Love. And you guys should go watch that video. I explained my reasons and why. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Go watch the video. So now we're up. Minnesota, I think, would probably trade up for Trevor Penning if they have, or Miami would probably trade up for Trevor Penning. Minnesota might take Trevor Penning. Who knows? But with the way this board has played out, they getting another wide receiver in there. Besides Jalen Wall would be nice. I think you can get that in Chris Olave. It's a good young receiving core for Tua Tungavailoa. You want him to develop, get him weapons. Something Green Bay never did for Aaron Rodgers. Even though they just got lucky with Devontae Adams being a fucking stud. Um, but getting another weapon in there for Tua is absolutely insane for his develop a need for his development. I know the offensive line's terrible. I give an offensive tackle, but we're gonna say that for the Bengals. Every pick the Bengals is gonna pick his offensive line. Um, but getting him another weapon in there is absolutely crucial. because uh, you can just double cover Jen Waddle and then Chris Olave on the other side. Good young receiving core right there with a good with a young quarterback, which is what I'm gonna say about Tua for now. Can't say she's back up. I'm not giving him wide receiver. It's too not the best pick right there for them. I'm getting George Karloff, edge rusher. They need edge rusher. Melvin Ingram was huge for them. Stepping in, you know, the young edge rusher right there who's on the team and a lot younger. Can be the core of that defensive line and pass rusher unit. Give me George Karloff right there. I love George Karloff out there, and this would make the Kansas City Chiefs defense very, very good. And now we're up here with the uh, Cincinnati, Bang uh, Cincinnati Bengals. And yeah, it's uh, it's Daniel uh, Philly out of Minnesota because they need offensive line very badly. Stop getting Joe Burr hurt. It's it's what lost to the Super Bowl was the offensive line not being great. And then here we up now with the Detroit Lions. I'm taking Johan Dotson. Johan Dotson because he's a speedster. They still need wide receiver next. Amon Ross St. Brown. A lot of people at 32 with the Lions are giving them. That spot right there uh, is a receiver. So uh, with best receiver on the board, John Dotson. And this was a weird first mock draft. I hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure to like and subscribe. We got Aiden, H Evan Neal going number one. Aiden Hutchinson at two. Kayvon Thibodeau at three. Ekum Quano four. Kyle Hamilton five. Charles Cross six. Jermaine Johnson seven. Amar Gardner eight. Matt Corral first quarterback on the board at nine. Trayvon Walker to the Jets at ten. Malik Will second quarterback on the board to the Commanders. Derek Stinley two. Uh, Minnesota, Garrett Wilson to the Cleveland Browns, David Ajabo to the Baltimore Ravens, James Williams, Philly, Ty Linderbaum, Philly, Jordan Davis uh, to the Chargers, <laughs> Kenny Pickett, the other quarterback going off the board, Tom Burks there, Saints, Andrew Booth Jr., 
Trent McDuffie going to the Patriots, I think, is an interesting one. Roger McCreary, who I like a lot, Zion Johnson. N'Kobe Dean, the most interesting part of this mock draft was the Trevor Penning falling right to my Green Bay Packers. I promise I don't plan stuff out like that. But <clears throat> Bengals offensive line, given the Chiefs and I rush there, was pretty good. So it makes that Miami Dolphins receiving core very fun and very exciting to watch. And John Dotson pairing up there with Amon Ross St. Brown. John Dotson to be that guy to take it over the top. Pretty good. Pretty good receiving core right there for Jared Goff and whoever they take at the second round with their quarterback. I like that. Probably Desmond Ritter. Maybe they take a chance on Sam Howell. But that has been my first Marvin Mock Draft. I'm happy to get this guys out for you way earlier than last year, which I love. Plenty of single team Mock Drafts coming soon. <clears throat> I thank you all a lot for taking the time to subscribe, subscribe, and up. Views a bit up. Absolutely love doing mock drafts. Plenty of more mock draft content coming your way. College basketball. Talked a little bit of college basketball on the podcast. If you want to hear about that, make sure to go listen to the podcast. If you want to see more mock drafts, subscribe here. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video. Leave a comment down below which single team you want to do less. And of course, thank you for listening.